Joining us now, NBC News senior investigative producer Sarah Fitzpatrick. I'll get to the politics and the striking difference between President Biden and former President Trump in a moment, but I do want to go inside that courtroom because this trial was so personal and so painful for the Biden family. I mean, he was found guilty of wrongdoing, a felony uh, charge on, on, on possessing a gun when he should not have, I'm lying on a federal form to obtain that gun when he was an addict. But still, the details in this case, Sarah, as you well know, are really ugly and they're really sad. Bring us into the courtroom when this verdict was read. Absolutely, Katie. I would say sad is how you could describe pretty much every day of this trial. And I think um, for those members of the Biden family in particular and some of those friends and family to have to sit there, I would ask them every day, what was it like to sit there and listen to those details? And they would say it was incredibly sad. Um, the verdict, when the verdict came in, it was all very, very fast and very silent in the courtroom. Uh, Hunter Biden came in shortly after we learned that a verdict had been reached. He sat at the defense table, uh, kind of with his hands on the table or writing some notes. And he just looked squarely at the jury as he heard those words, guilty, guilty, guilty. Um, the, his, the, his defense didn't have any additional items to discuss, nor did the prosecution. And then the court was dismissed. And in those moments after, he hugged first, which I thought was really interesting. He first hugged the young associates uh, that were working on his case that sat behind him the entire trial and thanked them for their hard work. He then hugged his attorney, Abby Lowell. He hugged David Kolansky, one of the uh, attorneys that worked with him, uh, really, really kind of on it as every step of the way, every day for months and months and months. And then he was with his family and I spoke with several people that were uh, with Hunter in the moments after he left the courtroom when he was in the defense room and then in the elevator going down and have been with him this afternoon. And they expressed that uh, despite how sad this trial was, that Hunter had was optimistic, that he was encouraging those around him, that he was expressing gratitude to everyone who had uh, worked so hard on the case and had been there in court and had really emphasized that, you know, as is a Biden family tradition, they continue moving forward. Um, and so I think, you know, although there was sadness in court today, there was also optimism and I think people holding their heads high as they walked out of the court. And we, that's what we expect to see in the months going forward. Dr. Katie. Jill Biden was there for so much of this trial, Sarah, but she couldn't get back into the courtroom for the verdict. She got held up at security. There was just too long of a line and the verdict came down so fast. What do you know about when she was finally able to get in to, to see her son, Hunter? Absolutely. So I was actually in the hallway and I saw her walk in, sunglasses on, looking at the floor, go into the defense room. Uh, and what I've, you know, I ha we don't know exactly what transpired, but people that I've spoken to close to the family uh, said that in this kind of really intimate human moment inside the defense room before they uh, kind of exited the court, that the moment that Hunter kind of came closest to kind of his voice cracking was when he thanked his parents and, you know, thanked them for their love and their support and how much that has meant to him, not only during this trial, but kind of through all of these tribulations, uh, you know, during his addiction and beyond. So I think we, and then I saw uh, the first lady, she exited the, that defense room behind Hunter and his wife, Melissa Biden. She had her sunglasses on, she was looking at the floor and there was this moment where Hunter kind of touched her back and said, mom, and made sure that she was the first one into the elevator. Uh, before those doors closed. So I think, you know, she was there every day in spirit. She was very stoic. She looked, you know, she was looking at the jury. She was looking at Hunter. She was hugging him and hugging other supporters. But you could tell that this was something that she was taking very seriously. And there were times that I would look over at her and she just appeared very deep in thought. Um, and we know from all of our reporting that she has viewed, you know, she's very protective of Hunter and that she viewed this as a really important, important moment for her in her relationship with her son, that she be there sitting behind him throughout this trial. You know, she's not his birth mother. His birth mother, of course, died when he was very young, a horrible car accident that killed her and, and, and their infant sister and severely injured Bo and Hunter, but, but um, Dr. Biden has been their mom since they were kids and has been there for Hunter Biden throughout uh, his life and, and certainly there during this trial. Sarah Fitzpatrick, Sarah, thank you very much.